the movie industry is having a hard time right now. Between sequelitis, superhero fatigue, and people just plain staying home instead of going to the movies, over-budgeted films just can't seem to catch a break. This isn't going to be an analytical video by any means. There are tons of YouTubers out there that do a fantastic job at that. What this is is an opinion piece based on my own interpretation of where the industry stands now versus the good old days, and for reference we will call the good old days 1977 to 2007. So like before Netflix started streaming. Movies and music are a huge part of our culture. Not only that, they are a great job creator and a big part of the U.S. economy, somewhere between 3 to 13 percent, depending on the year. When Netflix began streaming, several companies, including Disney, began racing to see how fast they could get their movies online to stream as well instead of sharing their content with Netflix or Amazon Prime. Soon, as you know, we had more streaming outlets than anyone wanted to subscribe to and all of the content was cut into tiny slices of pie with all of them wanting bigger cuts of our entertainment budgets. Soon this money wasn't good enough because all of them saw that this wasn't a viable business and as all of them did, they began throwing advertisements in the show, which as I remember was one of the main reasons we went to streaming in the first place, to get away from commercials. Stream however you want. I'm not here to bash streaming, but I am here to say some controversial things that are going to sound very anti-consumer. But listen, it is in the hopes that if these things were said and the right people in the industry heard them, quality would prevail over quantity again and maybe, just maybe, the consumer would win in the end. I mean, some of these streaming shows are starting to look like fan films from 10 years ago because the companies are in such a rush to make sure something new is constantly on the sites. Remember the old FBI warnings and all the you wouldn't steal a car ads at the front of your DVDs? It's my opinion that streaming has hurt the industry worse than bootlegging or copying movies at home ever could have. The ability to watch anything on demand for less than the cost of a Big Mac meal at McDonald's in most cases has made the worth of a film to the consumer basically worth less. Everything becomes background noise when it costs you basically nothing to have access to it. That's what the executives in the film industry do not seem to comprehend. Right now, the business model in Hollywood seems to be that a $100 to $200 million movie is released in the theater and then the audience is given the chance to see it or wait to stream it along with thousands of other things for $6 to $15 a month on whatever streaming service it is going to appear and eventually disappear on. So what's the incentive to see it in the theater? Fall Guy, a $140 million movie, was released on May 3rd this year, 2024. It will be on digital on May 21st, 2024, for God's sakes. I wonder what was the actual plan to make money by the studio on this movie. And that's just one of hundreds of films that studios have let sink with this business model. My proposal to fix the film industry is simple. Wait. Go back to letting a movie play in the theaters for a while. Then wait three months or so and put it on digital and, if you choose, put it on physical media too. Then wait another few months and let it go to streaming. Not only are you stretching out the life of the film and letting the word of mouth grow, but you are enhancing the chance of creating the most important thing with your movie, profit. There is absolutely no reason to have a movie you've just put in the theater available to rent or stream within three weeks. Again, I realize this is anti-consumer and anti-homebody, but think about this. Years ago, Pulp Fiction ran for somewhere around 21 weeks in the theater and still had an insane amount of home video sales and rentals. Forrest Gump had a theatrical run on average of 23 weeks, and I saw it in the secondary dollar theater after that. It was almost a year before it hit home video. That's how popular it was. I saw Star Wars Episode One 11 times in the theater in the summer of 1999. You know why? Because I didn't know when I would be able to watch it at home. How much money in tickets and popcorn 
candy and soda did I spend, I wonder. Would I have done that if I knew it was going to be on Disney Plus in a month? I doubt it. Who's going to see a movie in the theater 11 times now? Think about if they were. It's an easy fix. How you save the film industry is by creating a sense of urgency to go to the theater. Reminding the consumer that if they don't see the new blockbuster comedy or drama, that they might just miss out. As long as I'll just wait is an option in people's toolkit, the film industry will continue to be in trouble. If you make these changes, I guarantee the quality will go up and the consumer will start to notice. And while I'm talking about it, the music industry has been in trouble for a long time. The same methods could be applied to them. Stop giving away your music. Spotify pays you nothing. Believe me, I know. I've had music on Spotify. Release your album on physical release and digital purchase, followed by streaming something like three months later. Your fans that support you will actually buy your music. So much money is being left on the table by artists. Again, I know it sounds anti-consumer, but not anti-artist, not anti-filmmaker, not anti-quality. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have some ideas for fixing the film or music industry, add them to the comment section. I hope you have a great day.